Okay, for this last example, we're going to use real data again to estimate the effect of education on wages because econometricians love that stuff. Um, but rather than use father's and mother's education as instruments, because that's probably not a great instrument, we're going to use distance to college as, a, as an instrument. Um, and the argument here is that the closer you live to a university, um, the more likely it is that you're going to go to the university, which will then increase your wages. And so the exclusion story is that proximity to a college boosts your wages, but it's only because you get more education, which then leads to wages. There's no other path between how close you are to a university and your wages, which, as we talked about in the lecture, is probably not true. Um, there are probably other reasons why your wages might be higher in a college town, even if you're not getting more education, but we'll just pretend it's true. Um, and the thing that's different from this in this example from the other two that we did is that we're going to control for some things. Um, so rather than just use an instrument or just use two instruments like we did with mother and father's education, we're going to use distance to college as an instrument, but we're also going to control for some demographic factors um, because we can. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make a new section here called effect of education on wages with uh, what is, oh, distance as instrument, real data. Okay, so let me hit enter a bunch of times so we can be right here. So we're going to insert a new chunk. We're going to load the data here. Um, we're going to call this um, distance, because why not? Um, this is going to be read underscore CSV. The data set is in this data folder. I'm going to hit tab so I can see these. The data set is called card, because that's the last name of the guy who wrote this paper. Um, so if we run this, um, it has all of this information. We can turn that off and say message equals false. So now if we run it, we have a new data set here called distance with a ton of columns in it. Um, they still have father's education, mother's education. That's neat. Um, they've got a ton of other things in here. If you look at the um, um, information on the course website, I have a list of what some of these variables are. Um, because we're not going to use every single one. So I interpret some of them um, for you and say like near C4 is what we want. That means living close to a four-year college. Um, and so that, that's our main instrument that we care about. And there's some other things in here that we'll use as control variables. So we're going to do a rapid version of this instrumental variable thing. So we're going to first um, check assumptions. And so we want to check for three things, which is relevancy and exclusion, but spelled correctly, and exod, spelled correctly, exogeneity. Okay, so to do this, we're going to run a model. We'll just call this model first stage. Um, because it is the first stage, even though we're not going to do the manual first generate predictions second stage thing, um, because we want to look at the F statistic and we want to see if um, the uh, if living close to a university is related to education, because we want that to be a strong relationship. So we're going to say LM. So to do this, this is the column we care about. Our out our our first stage here is education. That's the that's the a main policy that we care about. So education is explained by, and our instrument is near C4, um, because that's what the column is named here, near C4. We could probably rename them to something easier, but we'll just stick with the names that are there. Um, we also want to control for different things. We could just run this and say data equals distance. Um, and that would show us the strength of just that instrument by itself, but we're controlling for some other things. And with control variables, you need to include them both in the first stage and in the second stage. So we don't want to just leave near C4. We want to get the other control variables, which are these, which I'm just copying from a different screen. There. So it's SMSA66 um, is something about um, living in a metropolitan area in 1966. Expert is years of experience. Exper squared is a squared version of experience. Black is one if the person is black, zero if not. And south means they're living in the south in 1966 if it's one, zero if they're not. So those are the control variables we have. 
we'll hit enter just to make it nicer here. Okay, so we want to look at the results here. So we say tidy model first stage and glance model first stage. And let's go ahead and run it and get rid of the console so we can see better. So if we look here, um, near C4, that's our main instrument. We wanna see if that is an actual effect. So here it says the estimate is 0.33. If we look over at the p-value, that is, it says 1.2, but really that is um, this e to the negative four means take this decimal, move it four places this way. So it's 0 0.0001, so it is significant. So we can talk about relevance here. Near Being near a college is relevant. Um, it is strongly associated with education, which makes sense. If you're near a college, you're gonna go to school more. Let's look at the F statistic. Um, here, the joint F statistic with all of these control variables and the instrument is 448, which is bigger than 10, which is also bigger than 104. Um, so we're good. This is a good, relevant, strong instrument. Um, so it works. Um, these other two conditions, exclusion and exogeneity, those are stories. There's not really a mathy way of testing those. So exclusion, we need to say, we need to make an argument that the only way that living close to a college will increase your wages is because you get more education. If there's any other pathway between living close to a college and wages increasing that doesn't go through education, then it breaks the instrument. So you can probably think of stories that will break that instrument. And then exogeneity, that just means that any of the unobserved confounders that that influence the relationship between education and wages, um, living close to a university should not be connected to those unobserved confounders. Um, and that might be a more plausible story in this case. Um, this instrument is mostly breaking because of exclusion, not necessarily because of exogeneity. So now that we've tested it, we, we're going to assume that it's okay. It's not really, but it, we'll, we'll say it is. It used to be back when this, like, 20 years ago when people were using this as an instrument. Um, but the world has gotten more complex and um, sophisticated since then. Um, now we can do the actual estimation. So we'll say model estimation. So to do this, we'll insert a chunk. And we will say model IV. Um, that's just what we'll name it. Again, I, I prefix most of the models I make with model underscore whatever. You don't have to. Um, I've seen people just say like M underscore whatever. You could not have it be named M anything. You could call it like, here's my dog and here's my rabbit model and here's my bunny model or whatever. Like it doesn't matter what you call these things. Just for the sake of you remembering what model is what, it, it's helpful. So we'll say model IV. Um, so we're going to use the IV robust function. So here, we're going to do both the second stage and the first stage at the same time, just to simplify life. So our main outcome is L wage, um, I think. Yep, because this is annual log wages. It's one of these columns here where they did the log of wage just because there are some people with really low wages, some people with really high wages. And so to make that distribution kind of more normal, they logged it. Um, which means we can interpret this using percents um, instead of changes in dollars. So here's our log wage that we care about. So log wage is explained by education. If we left it at that, that would be wrong. That's the unadjusted, naive, um, correlation is not causation estimate of the effect of education on wages. We don't want to do that. Um, we want to use our instrument, which was near C4. So that's that name of the column, near C4. Yep, so that's our instrument. Um, but we're also controlling for things. So we, we have near C4 plus other stuff. So if we come back up to this model, here's the other stuff we had, this SMSA66, all of those things. Um, so that's what we're controlling for here. Let me bring it back up to one line, just so it all copies as one line. So we want this SMSA down to south, so those are our controls. So we want to include the controls in the first stage, like that. But we also want to control include the controls in the second stage. So ultimately it needs to look like this, which is a really long and hairy formula. 
Um, I'm going to hit enter a few times after these plus signs just so you can see what's happening. Um, there. Okay, so this is saying we're estimating the effect of education on wages, controlling for these things, using um, near college as an instrument, and also controlling for the same things. And then finally, we need to tell it what data set we're looking at. So data equals distance. So now if we come here and say tidy model IV, and we run it, there we go. So what this means is we have results. So the way we interpret this is because we used log wages, these are percents. So every one year of additional education you get, causes your wages, your annual wages, to increase by 15.7%. And we can talk about causation because, arguably, we got rid of the endogeneity in education by using the near college instrument. And so we're left with the exogenous part of education, and so now we can talk about causal effects of education on earnings. And so that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and save this document. We'll knit it all at once. So again, it's going to go to the top, load all of the data, run each of the models, and it's thinking. Again, I should have actually named these so I could see what was happening, because now we're on unnamed chunk 13. Neat. And it's still going, and it's done, and there's our HTML file. There's the HTML file. Cool. So you can see our cool table of contents here where we're we had our fake education wages where we checked the assumptions and then did the actual modeling. Did the same thing with educational wages with real data, checked the instruments, estimated a model, and then we did education on wages again, but with in distance as the instrument instead of father and mother's education, also with real data. We checked the assumptions, we estimated the models. And if you scroll through the whole document, um, it has all of the results in here in one single document that is fully annotated and you can send this off to whoever as a report show it off to your neighbors to your family and say look at all this cool instrumental variable stuff i can do now i can prove causation using observational data